Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson, lesson one in sixth grade, is called tiling the plane. So we're going to look at tiling patterns and think about area. And so as we go to question one, which square, large, medium, or small, covers more of the plane and explain your reasoning? Well, I know that nine small equals one large. I also know that four small equals one medium. And so then we can break down what's going on here. How many large squares are there? Five. There are ten medium squares which if we multiply by four, equals 40 small squares. If we go back up to our large and multiply by nine, we get 45 small squares. Because five large squares is equivalent to 45 small squares. And then how many small squares are there? Well, just 10. And so which covers more of the plane? That's going to be the five large squares because, again, they're equivalent to 45 small squares. Let's move on to question two. Draw three different quadrilaterals, each with an area of 12 square units. All right. Well, let's think about this for just a moment here. If I start off by coming down three units, and out four units. This is a four by three rectangle, which is a quadrilateral. And sure enough, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve square units. Now, if we think about another type of rectangle here, if we go two down, and one, two, three, four, five, six across and complete the rectangle. We have now a six by two quadrilateral, which is a rectangle and quadrilateral. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve square units. So that's a second quadrilateral that has an area of twelve square units. Now, if we get creative with the last one here, we can come one down and how about? 12 across. And so we will end up with a 12 by 1 rectangle, which is a quadrilateral. And if we count up the squares on the inside, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 square units. So we have a 3 by 4, a 2 by 6, and a 1 by 2 rectangle for the quadrilaterals. And as we move to question 3, Use copies of the rectangle to show how a rectangle could A, tile the plane, and B, not tile the plane. So if we look at tiling the plane here, this is 2 by 3, so I could just draw another 2 by 3 and just keep coming out like this. And then what if I were to draw here? And then keep going two by three, two by three, two by three, and this would just keep going and keep doing things that are similar, having two by three rectangles that fill up this plane. You just keep drawing and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Now, Oh, we just have one more row. Might as well complete it, huh? Here, there, here, and there we go. Now, not tiling the plane, you don't want to fill in the entire plane. And so with this, we could just kind of draw a 2 by 3 rectangle here, a 2 by 3 rectangle there. Um, what else could we do? How about another two by three rectangle here and one there, and that's it. That's not tiling the plane there. 
Question four. The area of this shape is 24 square units. Which of these statements is true about the area? Select all, all that apply. A, the area can be found by counting the number of squares that touch the edge of the shape. Well, as we're touching the edge of the shape here, that would be just by counting one, two, three, four, and so on, touching the edge of the shape. That is actually not true. B, it takes 24 grid squares to cover the shape without gaps and overlaps. That is true. So B is a possible solution here. C, the area can be found by multiplying the lengths that are 6 units and 4 units. Well, that does get us 24, but that's not how we're going to solve this area here. What about D? The area can be found by counting the grid squares inside the shape. Certainly, if you counted all those squares up, one, two, three, four, and whoops, and so on, you would certainly get 24. So D is true. E, the area can be found by adding 4 times 3 and 6 times 2. Well, let's just test that before we do it. That's 12, and that's 12, and sure enough, when you add 12 and 12, that's 24. But let's see if the logic actually makes sense. Why are we multiplying 4 times 3? Well, if I lock in on this square and draw this line across, 4 times 3 gets me the area of 12 here. 2 times 6 gets me the area of 12 here. So sure enough, not only does 12 plus 12 equals 24, it actually makes sense for our problem. So E is true. So our solutions here are B, D, and E. And in question 5, here are two copies of the same figure. Show two different ways for refining the area of the shaded region. All angles are right angles. On well, the first one, what if I draw vertical lines? I come down here and come down here. And so my rectangle on the left would be 5 times 3 is 15. The length all the way down, let's see. The rectangle, let's go to the all the way on the right, 2 times 6 is 12. And now this one's a little bit trickier in the middle. I know that we have um, 5 taken up on this side and 2 taken up on this side, which leaves us 3 here, which matches that 3. I know that the entire height is 6, but 1 is taken up there, which leaves me with 5. And 5 times 3 is 15. So 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 12 is 42 square units. Now what if we work horizontally in the other one? What if I draw here and here? Well, my little one is 2 times 1, which is 2. My large one looks to be 10 times 3, which is 30. And now 3 plus 2 gets me a length of 5 here, times that 2 is 10. 30 plus 10 is 40 plus 2 is 42 square units once again. Two different ways. Question 6, last question for this lesson. Which shape has a larger area? A rectangle at 7 by 3 fourths inch or a square with a side length of 2 and a half inches? Show your reasoning. Well, if we take 7 and multiply by an area of 3 fourths, or I'm sorry, a length of 3 fourths here, you would get 21 fourths. For the square, if you did 5 halves times 5 halves, you would get 25 fourths for that area. So which is larger? The square. And that is it for this first lesson. Good luck.